So it was a funny old week. Uh, work was kind of bouncing around all over the place. I had a few days here and there. And um, I was trying to book, like, you know, I always book my fishing in around my work and my work around my fishing and get out when I can. And um, I was hoping to get up to my syndicate, but uh, it just, just didn't happen that week. So that day I ended up going over to Club Lake and uh, doing a few hours there and then uh, turned out into quite a good session. So I thought I'd pop over to the Club Lake for the day. I've not come for sort of uh, runs or bites for some time. And um, I've just started spawning out some pellet over zigs. And um, I did unfortunately lose a what felt like a decent one. I thought it was foul looks for a second, but I'm not too sure. Now I've had this one. Um, I think this looks about 20 pounds, 18, 20 pounds, something like that. Nice fish, nice mirror. Anyway, we're gonna get him out and have a little look at him. So I just started spawning over, um, spawning over 10 foot zigs, um, just fishing tiny little bits of black foam, um, size eight, um, wide gapes. And um, I've had quite a few, well I've had three or four fish, most of them have been small. Um, and then this one turned up, I don't know if it's gonna behave, but exactly. 25 pound on the nose. Absolutely cracking old mirror. Feels solid as well. Really nice fish. Lovely dark colours on him. Beautiful fish. Remember to keep them wet. Plenty of water. Show you his other side. Absolute belting fish. Look at that. Cracking fish. Really made up with this. It's really long as well. 25 pound, big old shoulder on him, lovely clean mouth, overslung mouth, beautiful fish. I'm gonna slip him back. size eight mixer hook got a little tiny bit of black foam there and i've just cut it so it's just a bit of an odd shape not straight out of the packet don't really matter but just the way i prefer to do it and you can see i've got a little tiny sort of like a stiffish kind of hair there if you like um small kicker on there small kicker and 11 pound zig line on there about eight foot and literally i'm just casting that out filling it down tightening up the clutch and then spawning over a couple of spawns of pellet um and it's literally going off within about 15 minutes. So fish are really up in the water today, um, despite the overcast conditions and a uh, bit of rain and stuff we're having. Well, it's perfect for, you know, perfect conditions for fishing, to be honest. But um, yeah, lots and lots of fish I'm seeing up in the water. And as soon as I put a spom in, they're in. They're in on that, on that bait, so they're obviously on the pellet. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just adding the smart liquid to the pellet, but I'm not putting it to the dry pellet. Adding a little bit of water first, and then add the smart liquid. And what that does, it coats the pellet in, so it gives it a nice coating. But because of the consistency of the smart liquid, it's quite, although it's a liquid, it can it, it dries out if you just put it onto dry stuff. So what I find is if you put a bit of water with it, it kind of activates it even more. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I'll probably show you a little bit later how I do that. So anyway, 
I'm going to get this rod back out and um, hopefully have some more. to look out for especially if you're thinking about zig fishing and the fish seem preoccupied by something else but you can't quite put your finger on it if you just see you can see the amount of flies it's obvious there's been a fly hatch and uh, the carp will prefer this bait over any other bait if they're on naturals very 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 difficult to get them off of naturals they absolutely love flies and if you see flies like this around then you need to get on the zigs fish up in the water get them zigs out little tiny bits of black foam kind of emulating the fly if you like a bit like a fly angler would um, and put that into your armory so as you can see there are loads of flies Big black flies all on the surface some still alive some dead some flying around smaller flies but basically there's been quite a few fly hatches around uh, this is an ideal time to get on the zigs um, it's a good sign you know if you see this in your water or wherever you're fishing stick a zig on hasn't got to be near the surface but anywhere near the surface or around the surface layers and um, you normally nick a few fish and sometimes some of the bigger ones can be hanging around there as well, so just something bear, bear in mind. So if you so happen to be fishing long hook links and you haven't got an adjustable zig, um, all you do literally is grab yourself a small bucket of water, drop your zig hook link in there with the hook bait as you can see, and then you just literally turn around, face to where you want to cast, and cast it out as usual. Like so. Something else to bear in mind, especially when you're zig fishing, um, doesn't necessarily affect all venues but sometimes if you're fishing zigs and you're spawning constantly over the zig every time you put your zig out and you cast a spawn over the top of it you're kind of waiting for a bite if you don't get a bite within sort of like three or four minutes sometimes 10 minutes 15 minutes is probably the longest you're going to want to wait you tend to want to spawn again over the top of it but what i like to do i don't like to especially if i'm fishing you now not too far out but i like to swap over to the little tiny spawns um it's only because like you want to put a bit of feed over the top of them but you don't want to fill the, the swim in if you like especially if you're feeding pellet which i am today um which doesn't matter too much because you give it sort of like maybe towards the end of the day and um or to, you know through your session if you haven't had any more bites or something like that or it slows down it's always worth putting a bait on the bottom because obviously you've built up a bit of a carpet and sometimes it can knock a few fish down so but anyway what I'm trying to get to is that, you know, disturbance-wise, I'm trying to keep that at a minimum, and so try and swap over to little tiny spawns through the session.
is the type of flying it look out for. You see these? Get on the zigs. Get your zigs out. Right, so what I'll do is get me smart liquid, run a few beads over the pellet, like so, and then grab my baiting spoon, just add a little drizzle of water over it. And what that does, it just dilutes the smart liquid a little tiny bit. Because if you imagine you've got all these little tiny pellets and you're trying to coat them in that one bit of liquid. But if you add a little tiny bit of water, you find that it dilutes the smart liquid. And gives it a nice, gives them a nice coating. And then what I'll do as well is somewhere else in the session I'll um I'll give them another topping with another little bit of water but I don't want to go too crazy because I want to keep them as pellets. I don't want to turn them into mush. There you go. So as you can see the place was absolutely alive with flies. Perfect time of year, although we're a little bit late. Um April's been like really really cold but it just turned the fish on that day. Uh, everything was perfect, as they say, when everything aligns. Everything seems to kick off, and um, they was really enjoying it. As you can see, fish were showing everywhere, and that oh, was crazy. So I've been feeding a margin spot, and um, had a funny take, what I thought was a take. Hit the rod, nothing there. Put it back, there was nothing wrong with the hook bait. Put it back, and literally within seconds it went off. And um, this lovely common sitting in the net. Not too sure how big it is, but it's definitely over 20 pounds. Pretty sure it is. I'm gonna get him out and have a little look, as usual. just just under 25 24 12 I think it was let's try and come back a little bit 24 12 lovely fish in immaculate condition as I say it was only out for literally five minutes I've been feeding a little margin spot and um, for a couple of hours not put nothing in for a little while I thought I'd leave it and give it give it a rest and see if they can come in and feed I've been having funny liners on the this other rod, so I kind of knew they were in the area, but anyway, so yeah, happy days are here again. Just spinning around, show you the other side. Remember to keep your bucket of water close, and just keep them nice and moist. Never know, there might be some big ones in here. I'll we'll carry on going. I love his mouth, look at his mouth. Massive lips on him. Slip him back, get that rod out quickly.
so for the little bottom bait rig I'm using, it's exactly the same as what I've been using in my previous videos, but it's very, very critical that you get that hook bait and that little pop-up to settle just right. You want it settling so the hook is just on the deck and the hook bait is hovering above it. Anything else just won't do. Well, not particularly big, hence the take. Quite a nice clean common, but um, he's, itching. he's itching to get back, so I'm gonna unhook him, slip him back. Well, that was a bit mad, wasn't it? <laughs> I've literally just started filming, and um, I just topped that little margin spot up with a little bit of bait. Just sat down, press, press record, and a couple of minutes in, or I don't know what it was, 30 seconds, 50 seconds in, Absolute one tone, and he pulled the rod in. <laughs> Love it. So we've got continuous rain now, which isn't a problem. It's a drizzle. Um, it's a light rain, which is fine. It's when it's bucketing down for hours and hours and hours, and uh, all that cold water changes the temperature, and there's a big part to pay. And, not really what you want but um this nice sort of overcast drizzle is perfect i've had probably about another two or three two or three fish since that last one on camera um but they're um i've only been like about 15 pound nothing big at all but they're all welcome um i don't mind getting bites especially when i know you know there's a lot of fish in here um compared to sort of like the winter in that when I first started fishing here, I didn't really know what was in here, but I came here the other day, just on my bike for a bit of a ride, and um, it was really, really sunny, quite warm, and there was loads of fish. I couldn't believe how many fish are in here, lots and lots, lots of fish. Now I'm getting bleeps on that left rod, which I'm fishing 
and they're on, I'm now fishing on the bottom so I'm fishing on top of all that pellet that I put in unless they have eaten it obviously but I don't think they have because um, like I say I was catching quite a, caught quite a few fish on the, on the zig oh, I'm getting a bleep on the right hand rod now and that's in the margin so I've got one out of a, one out of about 30 yards and one just down in the margin under a little tree um, so they're obviously in there but I'm expecting one of those to go any minute conditions are absolutely bang on So they've all been, I've had lots and lots of them at this sort of stamp. So nothing particularly big, but this one's about, it's about 16 pound. Not a way, maybe even a little bit bigger, 17 pound, but they're all that sort of stamp. And um, a proper, proper fight. Other than them two big twins I've had so far, um, they've all been this sort of stamp. I've lost count of how many fish I've had now. Um, but it's been a mad day. It's been raining all day, quite wet now, but the bites just keep coming. And it's like that, that sort of weather where they just keep coming, keep coming. You can keep feeding them, keep feeding them, and keep eating. Um, but they've finally got their eggs down, which is really nice. But you never know, might nick up a, you know, a couple of bigger ones still. And that's what we're after, so they've got to trip up at some point, haven't they? Anyway, I'll slip this one back, get the other rod out. Love and jubbly.
So, so another 20, 21 pounds, 12. Um, you can't mistake him, got a big old belly on him, but I think he's a bit spawn bear in this one. Well, she's a bit spawn bear, shall I say. But a good old fight. Um, take on a size six wide gate. I've stepped up milk sizes now. Um, obviously, we're going into mild weather now, so as the season progresses, I normally get hook sizes bigger. It's just the way I fish. Spin around. Not too sure if you can see it. It's belly. Yeah, you can just see it there. It looks like a busted rib, but it's not. That's kind of like spawn band, that is. But uh, nice deep bodied fish, all the same. Nice clean mouth. I'm just treating his mouth. A bit of hook damage. So, good old character. Lovely old character. That's what they call them. Good old character fish. Hopefully, she'll go back and she'll be, she'll release some of that this year with any luck. And um, all will be well. Slip her back. Pull her back out. And keep them coming. disturb your bait so they're disturbing the bait I put down in a pellet and the pellet's giving off the smart liquid and the smart liquid is creating a flat spot I get asked that a lot as well what's a flat spot you know what does a flat spot mean well that's what it means sometimes it can be fish just around um, congregating in a particular area but more often than not it's when they disturb your baited patch and subsequently kicks off oils and the attractants from your bait um, up into the water column and then creates a flat spot. So it flattens off the little bit of wind there that, um, that is going across the water. So it is half past six. Um, the rods are still out. I'm kind of betting that I'll probably have another one, maybe even a couple more. So I'm kind of, I want to hold on. But at the same time, I want to go home and have some dinner. So I'm bleeding, starving. Um, I'm getting, still getting little liners, little bleeps. There's loads of fish in the area still. And I'm still fish, seeing fish showing. But um, anyway, it's been an event for David. A few nice 20s. The weather's perfect for it. Um, sadly, back to work at some point tomorrow. And then um, I plan the next, uh, the next session. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, much appreciated. And um, no doubt you'll see me again on the bank very, very soon. So be lucky, go out. Remember, keep the bait going in this time of year. Well, from now onwards, you know, to get on the feed. So um, stick with it. Um, if you go out and you don't catch anything, just keep persevering and you'll get it right at some point. Keep things simple. Don't um, try not to uh, make things too, um, too complicated for yourself. Otherwise you end up with the right old pickle. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. Last fish of the day. It's got to be probably 13, 14 pound, 15 pound max. I've not weighed him, but such a pretty thing. I couldn't slip him back without showing you. So we'll spin him round, have a look at his other side, eh? Just as nice on this side. Check that out. Lovely. Pretty little thing. Caught on a five foot zig, and I've been adjusting the zigs through the day. Um, I noticed that the bottom baits have gone a bit slow, so I went back onto the zig, and this one went off. Like I say, not particularly massive, but what a lovely looking fish. Slip me back, and that'll be the end of that. <laughs>